When people think of Iowa, they often think of miles upon miles upon miles of flatlands. But Davenport, Iowa, where I attended chiropractic college, is actually quite hilly in places, particularly where it rises to the west of the mighty Mississippi River. One day, while I was attending my classes, I was climbing Brady Hill and I encountered a group of fellow students who had all gathered to watch an old Excalibur car that was struggling to make the grade. Now, I don't know if you've ever seen an Excalibur car before, but they look remarkably similar to the car from Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, and I really like those. So I gathered to watch the car. After a while, the driver was getting very frustrated and not making any headway, so the students who had gathered began to offer their suggestions. The first student suggested that salt should be applied to the roadway. Even though it was the middle of July, the thought was that the long, harsh winter left such a memory that must be dealt with in order for the car to advance. Salt was liberally applied, but to no avail. The next student suggested that maybe the driver wasn't trying hard enough. We all remembered the story of the little engine that could, and perhaps the driver just needed to give a little more effort. The driver pushed harder on the gas. It made lots of increased noise and smoke. Everyone cheered at the increased effort, but no further progress was made. Another student suggested, perhaps if the driver backed all the way down the hill and purged any unnecessary weight, take off all the luggage, take out the spare tire, heck, take off the back doors and the back trunk door, get rid of all the excess weight, get a running start, and maybe you'll get further up. The driver backed down, removed everything as they said, but lo and behold, he couldn't even climb half as far as before. About this time, a passing businessman suggested that this driver was in the wrong type of car for such a climb in the first place, and maybe he should just grow up and get a more respectable, conservative car. A passing minister suggested that his book said it was sinful to want to make such a climb in the first place, and the car should be donated to a more worthy cause, several of which he had that he could recommend. Fortunately, before the driver could change cars or give up the climb altogether, a more thought-provoking intelligence student suggested, first let's clear the salt from the roadway and leave it be. Ease up on the gas and stop your struggle. Replace all the things that you needed and that you were giving up. Put your doors back on. Put the spare tire back in. Get your luggage and put it back in your car. Keep the car that you have and continue your climb. But first, take off the emergency brake. The driver did as instructed, and he made the climb without any further effort whatsoever. Far too many people go through their lives leading lives of quiet desperation. They never reach their dreams. They never accomplish their goals. They go through life with their emergency brakes on. Because, let's go back, let's look at this story again. What is the salt, really, dealing with the memory of the harsh winter? How many people do you know that are stuck in the past, reliving and resuscitating it, giving it life anew over and over and over again, but never progressing into the now so that they can have a better future? What about those people who weren't maybe trying hard enough. They're addicted to struggle without change. Remember, if you keep doing what you've always done, you'll keep getting what you've always gotten. Trying harder at it is just going to give you more of it. What about those looking for backing down the road, purging everything, and starting over? Isn't that really a short-term solution to a long-term problem? Isn't that an awful lot like people you know who go for a change of venue? They're going to quit their job and find something better. They're going to dump their spouse or their partner and find something better. They're going to file for bankruptcy and start all over. And yet, how many of these people who've opted for a change of venue would be much better off with a change within you? How many of these people, once they've done this, seem to be further worse off with more missing in their life than ever before? 
And what about the passing businessman who suggested you grow up and drive something more conservative? Don't we all feel the peer pressure, the societal pressure to conform to established norms? But does that really help you accomplish your dreams? Or is conformity, as I like to say, truly the death knell to success? And what about the passing minister in his book? How many of you out there feel unworthy to accomplish your dreams, or to even have dreams in the first place? If you want a different result, you have to do something different. The answer of what's really holding you back it, it's, it's not the past, it's not your past history or the memories of it, it's not your struggle or your addiction to it, it's not f going to be found in short-term solutions or in conforming or in being unworthy. The answer of what's really holding you back is you. You are. If you want a different result on the outside, then you need to become a different you on the inside. As Mark Victor Hansen likes to say, Success is an inside outing, not an outside inning. I'm Dr. Ketchum, reminding you to dream big, dream often, and always believe in your dreams.